Welcome to the number one spot health and wellness practitioners go to double their current income and turn their 10 hour work day into a 10 hour work week. Join us as we dive into the tips, tools, and tech you need to create a life and practice on your own terms, more freedom, flexibility, fulfillment, and of course, funds. It's time to build your online practice. And I'm your host, Michelle Rogers, also known as The Wealthy Woman. Be sure to subscribe for your weekly dose of education, inspiration, and action. Let's get started. All right. So are you ready? <laughs> this mini training, this masterclass is all about how to manage it all. So really ditching the idea of work-life balance, which I think creates so much stress and anxiety <laughs> for people um, and really creating aligned integration your way. So I'm going to show you exactly how I've been able to manage a multi six figure business, focus on an intense two year personal development program. If you want to hear more about that, happy to share um, and start a new group wellness membership with a minimal team and still have time for myself, family and travel. So. Also, stay put to the end. I have something super, super, super special to share with you. If you love this masterclass, um, I'm sharing something that you're not going to want to miss. It's something that I've never done before, but it is way overdue. So, so excited to share with you. Now, if you are new to my world, my philosophy and perhaps yours as well, is when we give our body the right information, the right instructions, the right environments, it will do what it does best, which is heal, right? And that's what we're all here to help facilitate with our clients, with our patients, okay? We have the capacity as practitioners to literally change the world, right? The How we show up, how we interact with our clients, with our patients, the effect that we have, the impact that we have on their lives ripples out to everyone, right? Ripples out to the world. It ripples out to their own friends and family, and that ripples out to more people. And it's just incredible the amount of impact that we can have. So I just want to remind you of that, remind you that your work is needed in the world and that you offer not just a life transforming service, right? But you actually provide a life giving service. Okay. So why I'm guessing you are likely here and tuning into this manage it all masterclass is there's probably some overwhelm, right? Life just seems to always get in the way. If it's not one thing, it's another, and you can't seem to get a break, right? There's frustration, right? You have big dreams and you're ready to make them happen, but you just can't seem to get things under control long enough to make progress, right? It feels like your hands are tied behind your back. And then there's stagnation, right? The days, the weeks, the months, the years just keep passing by and you know things aren't going to change unless you make a change. Am I right? All right. So if this sounds like you, you're in the right place, I have got you covered. So take a deep breath, relax, tune in. What I'm hoping that you're gonna gain from this masterclass is clarity, right? So you're gonna be able to cut through the chaos by getting clear on your next steps direction. You're, you'll know where, you'll know how to start consolidating your efforts into a clear strategy for productivity and progress. You're going to know how to identify your next steps. You can finally start moving the needle forward, right? No more stagnation. And then here's a quote from Thomas Edison. Perhaps you've heard it. It says, if we all did the things we're capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. <laughs> I love this quote. All right. So Life is always happening, right? So let's do it. The only constant is change. So do it is going to be um, the acronym that you're, we're going to be covering today. D-O-I-T. And then the exclamation point, exclamation point actually stands for um, celebrate. So we're going to get to that one. All right. So D, brain dump. Okay, so whenever we feel overwhelmed, chaotic, and frustrated, it's usually because we're creating stories right? Those stories lead to feelings that may not actually be true. The truth is we don't have clarity. Okay. So number one, have a dedicated place to collect it all. One 
dedicated place, right? Do you prefer writing? Do you prefer making voice notes? Do you prefer typing? Choose a platform and be consistent. We don't want a combination of sticky notes over here and, you know, computer notes over here and voice notes over here and phone notes over here, right? Like we want to have one place where we're dumping everything. That is such a major thing that I think a lot of people don't do, right? And that's what kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It kind of um, perpetuates the chaos, right? Because like our note-taking is chaotic, right? So let's start streamlining that process. Number two, get it all out in whatever medium you prefer, right? Writing, speaking, all the things. Dump your current projects, your current tasks, ideas all into the platform. Don't hold back. You're not limited here. It could be the silliest thing like I need to get garbage bag ties or something, right? Add it. <laughs> could be like, you know, something for the business, right? I need to hire a CPA. Write it down. Anything, anything and everything. Just write it down. And then three, put a system into place. Put a system in place to dump once a day or once a week depending on how things work in your life, right? Everything can be refined to you. So what works best for you? What kind of flow works best for you? You know, a lot of people, they like to do it on, on the go. I know that's the type of person that I am, right? If I have something that comes into my head, I'm like, oh, I need to remember that. Put it in the brain dump thing, right? Uh, I need to write that down, okay? The consistency is gonna help you create a rhythm so you don't feel like you always have that scattered energy, Okay. And this is like learning any new habit, right? This is like giving your client or your patient something to do some type, some type of lifestyle enhancement, right? Habit stack it. Maybe there's something that you do every single day where you can be like, oh, okay. Like, let me check my brain dump thing, or let me add to that. Or there was something I wanted to add to that. Right. Or let me collect it and I'll put it into that one place. Okay. So this is an example of uh, the platform that I use. It's called Notion, N-O-T-I-O-N. Um, and I just have some ideas, like this is how I organize things. Um, so you can see down in the bottom right, there's like an area for journal, quick ideas. Also, if I'm feeling like I'm in a funk today, I've got a little checklist for myself. Like, how are things going here? Um, so those are areas that I can put things. And then from there, I can organize them, which we'll get into next because O is organize. So O, organize. Once we have it all out, it's time to organize and categorize, right? So whenever I'm dealing with a lot of information and I need to make it make sense, I go from macro to micro. This is always really, really, really helpful for me. This is helpful if I'm creating a new program, if I have a brand new idea for even like a masterclass like this, whatever it might be. It's like, okay, like let's go from macro down to the micro, right? It's just how my brain works. I don't know if that's how your brain works. But so number one, take a look at your list, everything that you dumped out and find any tasks that are actually projects. So what I mean by that is, is a lot of times we think of, um, or I put an example here, for example, update, update website is actually a project. That is not a task. That is a project, right? So the tasks of that project of updating your website might be update your bio. Simple, one task right? Or add a new photo on this particular page, right? That's a task. Or add one blog post, right? Or update that blog post or whatever that means. Update, update an opt-in on your homepage. Those are tasks. So do you see how that's differentiated? Project is a much larger overall thing. It's comprised of multiple tasks, but we want to make sure that everything is broken down into tasks because that's how we move the needle forward. So number two, have two to five categories max around the organization piece, right? So examples might be tasks that you do inside of your business or in your business, tasks working on your business. So if you don't know what that means exactly, tasks in your business are going to be like maybe face-to-face -face time with clients or patients. That's you working in your business or charting is going to be in your business. Whereas when you're working on your business, that might be more uh, maybe social media, marketing, um, doing master classes or webinars or things like that. That's working sort of on your business. Doing financials is working on your business, right? Um, other categories to consider might be like, this is social media, this is marketing, this is content creation, blah, blah, blah. 
Over here, we've got like offer things, maybe like offer refinement, program delivery, um, client experience, so that might be in one category. And then you've got financial literacy, maybe you've got um, your QuickBooks stuff and um, like organization around finances, credit cards, loans, um, doing um, like just balancing your checkbook or whatever, reconciliation, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then client delivery could be another aspect too, right? So it could be like, oh, I need to um, basically in, enhance my client experience or something to that degree. So these are just ideas, but just trying to get your brain going and moving on how you can actually break these up into categories. Number three, break these down into four different categories. I'm going to give you a visual in just a second because I'm a super visual person. So things that you like and that you're good at. This is your zone of genius, by the way. Ideally, this is where you should be putting all of your efforts. What you like and that you're not very good at. <laughs> what you dislike and you're good at. And then what you dislike and you're not good at. So what does that actually look like? So here's sort of like a quadrant thing and how you can organize. You can do this again. You can do this on paper. You can do this on your computer. You can do this on a big whiteboard, um, like a dry erase board or whatever. Um, but basically the like and you're good at this is really ideally where you're focusing the majority of your time. Again, this is your zone of genius, what you like and what you're good at, right? This is where you shine. So ideally, this is you working with clients and patients, right? And this is also likely marketing at this stage in your business. Okay. And then when it comes to the dislike and the not good at, if you're in a position where you're able to hire out or delegate help to hire a VA, and just so you know, you can hire a VA for as low as like an, an hour a week. Like you don't have to invest, you know, I need them for 40 hours a week or 20 hours a week or something like that. Like you can literally hire someone for just a small amount of help. But imagine if you got that hour or two um, back <laughs> per week, like how impactful that could be. You could spend that hour or two in self-care, right? Like really restoring yourself so that you can give from overflow instead of sustenance. So the things in this category are the things that I recommend delegating first, right? And then you can go into the other two. I would recommend if you want an order exactly, I would go delegate the dislike, knock it at first. Then I would delegate uh, the like, not good at. It's best to delegate the things you're not very good at first, then delegate the dislike, good at, and then delegate the like and the good at. Okay. So I do it is identity. So once you've organized your brain dump, it's time to start identifying which tasks need to take priority and how you can honor your boundaries so you can start making the most of the time you have. So number one, review what your current habits or patterns have been and see if there's opportunities to refine, update, or strengthen certain boundaries. This could be with clients, friends, family, colleagues, right? So when I say boundaries, do you know what I mean? So this could be making promises that you should never have made, right? Saying yes when you mean no, right? Or not speaking your truth, right? Or kind of like, I think we all know what it feels like when our boundaries have been encroached on. Um, a lot of times there's a sense of, um, sometimes it's like anger or resentment or something like that. Something's been shifted. And if we don't speak up about that, if we don't reinforce those boundaries, if we don't honor ourselves, then um, it's it really sets us up for a lot of issues, a lot of anger, a lot of resentment, a lot of wasted energy, right? So by reinforcing those boundaries, it really helps to preserve our energy and really honor ourselves. Okay. It also gives other people permission to do that as well, right? Like your patients or your clients. Number two, our ultimate goal is to delegate everything that doesn't fall into the like and good at, right? So that's our ultimate goal. I know some of you, maybe many of you are not going to be there quite yet, but ideally that's what we're working towards is delegating everything but the like and good at, okay? What most practitioners don't realize, like I mentioned, is that you can actually have a VA for as little as an hour a week, okay? Number three, in the meantime, prioritize these 
items. So prioritize the items that are categorized, right? So ideally we put the majority of our time into income generating activities. So typically in the online space, this is sales and marketing. Okay, so this means social media. If you're doing the virtual practice, social media is huge. So are you putting a good amount of time and energy in building relationships and creating effective content in doing that? Because that's how people are going to be magnetized to you. That's how they're going to know, like, and trust you so that they end up enrolling in your program. Okay, so just think about that whenever you're prioritizing. Is this an income generating activity for me? This could also be client retention. So really, obviously, providing a stellar client experience is going to help them. Um, is going to help them perhaps re-sign with you or have a continuing client experience. Okay. So this is an example of me kind of organizing my week. Um, so what I'll do is I will usually list out, I'll usually start by listing out things that I really need to do during the month. And then as the weeks go by through the month, I might just kind of slide over different things under different days. Um, and I'll look at my calendar and just see where these things can fit in best. But this is just an example of how I organize things. And this is just another view um, of sometimes what I'll, what I'll do here. This was actually today <laughs> of these things. Um, and then I will color coordinate them <laughs> if I'm feeling up for it. Um, so time blocking. Now you've got your brain dump, you've got things organized, you've identified and prioritized things. So now time blocking comes into play. And I absolutely love time blocking. This is something that I talk about inside of my mentorship, but it's one of my favorite productivity tools. And there are a few ways to go about this. It helps us stay focused and commit to removing tasks off of our list in a very systematic way. So number one, get real with your calendar, right? Have one calendar that you look to and reference, right? There's nothing worse than like putting things on different calendars and being like, oh my God, I double booked myself or oh my God, I, did, I totally forgot about this thing I had to do or whatever. I am I know because I'm guilty. Um, so get real with your calendar, really look at it. Um, what are the non-negotiables that you have to have on your calendar, right? Client calls, um, patient care, self-care, that's a non-negotiable, okay? Family time, appointments that you might have, travel that you might have, events, conferences, whatever that might be there. Those are like the things that are static on your calendar, right? Our goal is to take advantage also of our ultradian rhythms. That's what is, um, that's one of the reasons why I love time blocks. And we can talk more about ultradian rhythms in just a moment. Um, but look at what's left over. So once you've filled in those sort of static things, then see what time you have left over. If you have any full days available, then you might want to dedicate them to either working in your business or working on your business, right? And so in your business could also be like an admin day, right? Or like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean, on your business is an admin day. In your business would be like patient care. So for example, I work with a lot of practitioners who might still be working like in the office or they might be an associate or they might be working with someone. They have like a, a like a, a steady job. I think we should really not use that term because it's not as reliable as we think. It's sort of this pseudo security. But anywho, you know what I mean? Like where they're actually like an, more of an employee. Um, and so what if you do have full days available, it's like maybe you dedicate a full day to your virtual practice and growing that virtual practice. Right. And so then you could kind of categorize some of the tasks into that day where you're like, great, these are the things I'm putting into this day that are just dedicated to growing my virtual practice, because the goal is to get out of the, the employee type work. Right. Um, and then um, if you only have a few hours here and there, then you can start time blocking. And so what that means is review your priority, your income uh, generating tasks and start blocking out 30 to 90 minute time blocks, depending on the task. And it's 30 to, to 90 minutes, ideally, because those kind of flow with our ultradian rhythms. We have these ultradian rhythms. Usually it's about 90 minutes, 90, 90 to 120. So like an hour and a half to two hours um, is an ultradian rhythm typically. And what this means is that is the amount of time that we're able to truly focus and stay engaged. And then we end up having these sort of metabolic byproducts building up from all of that sort of mental activity and that um, focus really. And so ideally we want to step away after that time 
go for a small walk, um, you know, go eat some food, whatever you might be doing, ideally not on a screen or anything, because that actually allows our body to flush out those metabolic byproducts and almost like a detox process. And then when we come back after, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes, then we can actually start really fresh and like start again, like, oh, I feel like refreshed. I feel focused. And it's just a really amazing rhythm. If you're able to, to make that work throughout your day, um, think of, uh, Parkinson's law right? So when you're picking your time blocks for your tasks, so maybe you have, you want to write a piece of content and um, you're like, okay, great. I've got an hour and a half here. I'm going to write three pieces of content for next week. Awesome. That's about 30 minutes per piece of content, right? So what ends up happening here, the Parkinson's law is work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion, right? So if you give yourself that 30 minutes, it's going to take you 30 minutes to finish that piece of content. If you give yourself an hour and a half, like that whole hour and a half, that whole 90 minutes, it's going to take you 90 minutes to finish that one piece of content, right? I don't know if you've ever noticed that. So really, I do encourage you and you'll find what time like feels really good for you. Like maybe, you know, like, okay, it takes me just 20 minutes to write a piece of content or whatever, like awesome. Then fit that in as your um, time block for a a content piece creation or something like that. So just an idea, a task might be longer too, right? So you just have to figure out what your flow is and and how long you have. But typically think about things 30 to 90 minute time blocks. And this is just sort of an example of what time blocks might look like. I love doing things color coordinated. So you could have like different things, meaning different, different things, right? That's so visual. Okay. Celebrate is the exclamation point, though, right? We need to do it. We need to dump, organize, identify, um, time block. And now it is time to celebrate. So be intentional about celebrating it all. It doesn't matter how big or small, right? It's all moving you towards the goal. So number one, success will ebb and flow, right? No matter what, you need to have those small wins to really ride it out. So if any of you are entering sort of this entrepreneurial space, running your own practice, headed into the virtual space, there are ebbs and flows. It is not a study like, amazing, this is so great, right? Like it is, it it has its ups and downs. It is the nature. It is the essence kind of, of being an entrepreneur, right? Like we're pioneers, like we're doing things differently and there's nothing else I could possibly imagine doing, right? It's all so worth it. It's worth the blood, sweat and tears. Um, but every single small win gives your brain a bit of dopamine, which not only makes you feel good, but it gives you that get shit done type attitude, right? This can be taking um, at two, this can be taking an intentional moment to recognize yourself, your accomplishment and sitting in the excitement, the satisfaction, the motivation that comes, or it could be popping a bottle of champagne, like whatever it is that you do to celebrate just allow it to really sink in on the cellular level, right? Acknowledge yourself, acknowledge yourself, okay? And number three, the point, um, the point, if the, the make a habit just, okay, sorry for the typos here. Um, basically, make it a habit to celebrate yourself because this consistent programming of celebrating your success will reinforce that you can do hard things and make progress. Okay, so important. We bypass it. We just overlook it all the time. I'm guilty also. Um, So I need this reminder as well. So what is next? Let me just dive in real fast. See if there's any comments, questions or anything going on inside of the group here. Um, I don't see comments. Sometimes it takes a moment I know some of you are watching, so if you have any questions, definitely pop them in the comments so that I can um, answer them for you. You can also tell me if this has been helpful. All right, yeah, I don't see any comments here, but I see you guys watching, so hello. I hope this was helpful. Sometimes we just need like a bit of a framework, right? to like get things going. So like I mentioned before, you know, definitely habit stack, like figure out where you can fit this in and just make it something that you get into a routine and a rhythm with. That is all I have for you today. 
I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you're able to really kind of decrease that overwhelm, consolidate your thoughts, get things in order so you can really start moving the needle forward. If you have any questions about this video itself or about the live program that I'm posting next month, do not hesitate to reach out, pop a comment below, send me a DM, whatever works for you. All right. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, your evening, and the rest of your week. And I will see you next week. All right, that's a wrap for today. If you want the exact breakdown of how I help practitioners go from their first 5K to consistent 50K months with just two offers, 10 hours per week, and an audience of less than 500 people, be sure to click the link in the podcast description or head to wealthywoman.co forward slash breakdown. To make sure you don't miss an episode, be sure to subscribe. And for daily online practice insights, follow me on Instagram at wealthywoman.co co let's create your life of wealth full of abundance purpose health wealth and joy